Tonight our special guest is Mark Winger. Mark is the recently installed Grand Master of Freemasonry in New Zealand. This was a splendid ceremony, but this time accompanied by a very special theme. Speak up for Freemasonry. Mark Winger, welcome to The Beat Goes On. Thank you. Thank you for the welcome. Thank you for the invitation to be here. Oh, right. Now, Mark, you are here today because um, something very special happened to you back in November 2016. wasn't long ago. I suppose you were just recovering from this marvellous event. You were, mm -hmm. you were there in this huge room with um, thousands of fellow Freemasons and you, were, you received the title of Grand Master of, of uh, Freemasonry New Zealand. Wow. Certainly uh, very proud to yeah. be uh, entrusted to guiding Freemasons New Zealand uh, through the next three years. So it will be uh, a challenge for me, mm. but I think I have the ability and the skill, I've certainly got the enthusiasm to try and make a real difference to it. Now, uh, when did you first join and did you ever think that one day I'd be head of Freemasonry New Zealand? Did it ever occur to you? How many years ago was that when you first entered the your well, first lodge? 1976 was when I joined 19, Freemasonry. Wow, how old were and, you then? Uh, 23. My uncle was uh, the man who uh, initiated me into Freemasonry. And uh, ever since then, I've been a, a real fan, real fan of the camaraderie mm. that we, we engender, the principles and the, the virtues that Freemasonry promotes, and the fellowship that one gets from uh, mixing with some really good guys. Now, did you have an ambition to be the Grand Master, or has it just happened naturally? No, I've never had an ambition to be the Grand Master. <laughs> it, it was always, especially back in 1976, in those days... Young 23-year-old. Yeah, a young 23-year-old. Yeah. I was delighted to be part of an organisation that had morals and had standards. Mm. And uh, no, you never think about, oh, well, I'll be the Grand Master in, in yeah. 40 years' time. Now, you said something wonderful there, uh, that... Uh, um, Look, it doesn't matter who I speak to about, uh, somebody might mention Freemasonry and they'll say, oh, my uncle was a Freemason or granddad was a Freemason, dad was a Freemason. Seem to have uh, seeped into New Zealand culture very deeply, but uh, there's a lot of competition out there now, isn't it? And uh, how has Freemasonry fared over the, since the Second World, the end of the Second World War? Because that's when it was at its most powerful, wasn't it? 50,000 members, wow. Certainly, at the end of the uh, Second World War, mm. uh, the returning servicemen were looking for an organisation that had discipline, because yeah. they were used to discipline, yeah. uh, that had pomp and ceremony, that encouraged dignity, and that uh, supported the virtues, the honesty, the integrity, the loyalty, mm. uh, and Freemasonry was an obvious fit. And uh, so they joined Freemasonry. Our numbers following the Second World War grew, as you say, 50,000, 50,000 plus. Yeah. Um, since then, they have aged and, and some have passed on, uh, but Freemasonry, uh, what are we now, 70 years later, yeah. uh, it remains a force in our community. Mm. We are now attracting the descendants of those yeah. wonderful men yeah, that probably. were Freemasons back in the 1940s, their children, their grandchildren, uh, today, we have Freemasons joining uh, because their grandfather yeah. was... Uh, That's what I'm saying. Everybody's got a granddad that was a Freemason or uh, yeah, exactly. like that. And a lot of it, you know, we, we, um, because Freemasons New Zealand has been uh, in existence for 125 years, we have photos and memorabilia going right back for 125 mm -hmm. years. Wow. And so those families, when mm. they join and they find a photo of their grandfather in his Masonic regalia. Yeah. It's something really special. Yeah. Now, getting back to that installation last November, Mark, uh, I want to pause on that for a moment. Wow, what a, f it's a fantastic sight, isn't it? Um, what, there's around about two to 3,000 uh, Freemasons turn up and they're in their full regalia and um, it's sort of like a coronation in a funny sort of way, isn't it? And, uh, there's, there's a lot of pomp and ceremony yeah, yeah. in it. And, and, what were you uh, thinking? Sitting well, in see, the, yeah. what, what we've done for the last yeah. few years now is we invite our partners, our families and members of the public to come along and attend. And this ceremony is once every three years. So when I'm installed as Grand Master, that's for a three-year term. It'll be 2019 yeah. when my successor yeah. will be uh, installed. Yeah. And that again will be in Wellington 
Uh, we had it at the Michael Fowler Centre because, again, the atmosphere and the environment there suits the pomp and the ceremony. The public will be invited. Uh, I was speaking to a, uh, a lady after the event and she was also one saying, my grandfather was a Freemason, <laughs> yeah. but he was very secretive, wouldn't tell me anything yeah. about it. Yeah. She said, so she had made a point of coming along to see the installation, was thoroughly uh, enjoyed the, the, uh, the circumstances, the way it was conducted, the dignity and... Uh now on your website, it says what Freemasonry is not, and um, you brought that subject up just now. And you proudly say it is not a secret society. It's not. A, why do people think it's a secret society? And yet it's yeah. not. And you proudly say that it's not. And yet it's got that reputation, hasn't it? Yes, yes, we do. Um, and part of that is, is almost self-inflicted because yeah. we haven't spoken about Freemasonry. And so the public don't hear from us what Freemasonry is, but they hear it from third parties who don't really know. Always get the wrong story. And they get the wrong story. Yeah. But if I go back to the, the, um, the stonemasons 300 years ago yeah. who were building the cathedrals in the UK, they would build uh, a cathedral and then move to the next cathedral to build the second one. And they were all at different levels of experience and expertise. Mm. So when you arrived at a cathedral, you had to prove that your level of experience was at a certain um, grade. Level, yep, yep. And the way you did that was by a handshake, a grip, a token, a word. And that then demonstrated to the builders that you, you were, one of them. were at a particular yeah. level. You yeah, had yeah. certain qualifications. Yeah. Now, Freemasonry, we, there are three degrees that we pass through to become a full mason. Mm -hmm. The entered apprentice, the fellow craft, and the master mason. So when you undergo the first ceremony of entered apprentice, you are given a grip, uh, a word and a token, which is secret, mm. and it identifies that you are at that first level of experience in Freemasonry. Mm. When you do the second stage, the fellow craft, you are then given a second grip, token and word, and that again demonstrates that you have more experience than the entered apprentice, yes, exactly. but you're not yet the mm. master. So that got confused. The people thought because uh, that was uh, an old tradition that came from being a, a, a real live mason working on a cathedral, exactly. that Freemasonry was a secret society, which wasn't the case. If I, if I was looking at Freemasonry today and yeah. putting it on a scale of one to a hundred, mm. one is a totally secret society yeah. and a hundred is a totally free, open, yeah, yeah. free uh, society. I would put Freemasonry at about 98, wow. almost entirely mm. open. The 2%, the 2% reflects that, little that bit, small yeah. part yeah. of the ceremony because there is so much more in our ceremonies about virtues, tolerance, understanding, honesty, mm. loyalty, all those other virtues which occupy the bulk of our ceremonies, but the secret part is only that small portion to enable you to identify that you are at a particular Picking, level yep. of experience. Uh, one of your first uh, uh, things that you did upon installation was to speak up and say, look, uh, exactly what you and I have just been talking about, this, the uh, secretiveness, um, speak up for Freemasonry. Um, you must have watched as the years have gone by and thought uh, we could do a lot more to um, promote Freemasonry. So. What led to you uh, starting this new campaign? Speak up for Freemasonry. Well, exactly. The, the, look, the Speak Up campaign is a simple one. Mm. It, it mm. starts with the Freemasons themselves not really understanding what we can and what we can't talk about. Yeah, even they, even they are confused. Yeah, yes, right? exactly. And so I wanted to make it clear mm. that there's 2% that we can't talk about, yeah. but there's 98% yeah. that we can and should be talking about. So the 98%, I'm encouraging the brethren, their partners, families yeah. to talk about the 98%, mm. uh, the good that Freemasonry is doing in our community, yeah. the values that it supports in our society and the, the support it gives to our partners and our families and the involvement that they have in Freemasonry. There is so much in Freemasonry that's good and we shouldn't be uh, reluctant to communicate that to the public. Now, um, 
keeping on the subject of what it is not, it is not a religion, is it? Any, any religion can join Freemasonry. You can be a Hindu, you can be a Muslim, you can be a Catholic, you can be a Mormon. Anyone's welcome. That's right. Freemasonry is spread over the world. Mm. And so in New Zealand, we have our New Zealand uh, constitution, but Freemasonry is spread every quarter of the world. Yeah. And so through that, there are hundreds of thousands of Freemasons in every country that you like to mention. And yes, there are uh, brethren from all different sorts of religions. Our fundamental requirement is that a Freemason has a belief in a supreme being. Now, how the brother interprets that his supreme particular being. supreme yeah. being is up yeah. to him. Yeah, Just to have a belief that there's something more than the physical existence we have. That's right. And, and, and when you come to think of the, the virtues of good and bad, evil, and honesty and uprightness, loyalty, a lot of that finds its source in your belief of a supreme being. Yeah. Now, Mark, what have you gained? What has Mark Winger gained from being a Freemason from that age of 23 when you first joined? What, what do you think, the, what's the number one thing you've gained? It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Freemasons say uh, Freemasonry makes a good man a better man. Well, that's a good, that's right? a good slogan. Yeah. yeah. And well, it, yeah. it is. But it, it's often said. And, and when I think of myself, yeah. when I joined at a, as a 23 year old, uh, I was shy and reticent, not confident in speaking in front of people, not confident in having a dialogue in front of a hundred people listening to what you might be saying. Forty years later, through Freemasonry, I have learnt to get that confidence, to have a view, to express the view, mm -hmm. to be tolerant of other people's views and opinions, and I think that makes me a better human being and, and uh, you know, one with a wider understanding of world affairs. There was an old adage once that uh, joining Freemasonry was great to help one's career, but is that true or is, it, is that now sort of, uh, where, where, where would that have arisen from? I do remember it being made quite clear uh, throughout my time in Freemasonry, and it's still the case now, that Freemasonry in itself won't help you with your job connections. Yeah. You won't get any work just because you happen to be a Freemason. Mm. But what has happened, however, is that over 40 years, you do make a lot of friends and colleagues within Freemasonry. Mm. And when they may need work to be done, it's natural for them to gravitate to somebody that they know that they can trust and that they can rely on. Yeah, they, they could say, oh, I know Mark. Mark's a solicitor, of course. That, that can happen like that. It can. But it's, it's one of the things you'd steer away from in Freemasonry to say that this is a place where you go to gain personal advantage. Yeah. If somebody wants to join Freemasonry because yeah. of the, the business opportunities, yeah. forget then it. Yeah, that's what forget you're it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, won't, you won't do it and yeah. you, won't, you won't be welcomed mm. in Freemasonry if that's what your motive is. Yeah. Mm. Now, you must be the busiest guy in New Zealand because, uh, what, how many lodges are there in New Zealand? Two to three hundred and they all want you to appear, don't they? Uh, how do you get around that? Uh, Yes, look, the, there are 200 odd lodges yeah. in New Zealand. They are all keen to have the Grand Master attend. Yeah. It's a very special occasion to have the. Yeah. It is, yeah. it is. And this coming weekend, I'm yeah. up to Kai Tai. The Kai Tai Lodge is celebrating 125 years. Mm. And so, as part of that celebration, they're keen to have the Grand Master there. So, that will be a weekend up in Kai Tai. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. It should be a, a great opportunity. But you don't want to do that every weekend, do you? Uh, well, I have to say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You see, being a solicitor, yeah. I am working Monday to Friday, yeah, yeah. and so I do have a full-time job, and I fit Freemasonry around my work, and that's again one of our principles in Freemasonry. Yeah, yeah. You know, the pecking order is your family comes first, yep. then your work, and then Freemasonry, and and we're quite keen, you know, quite keen on. A little bit different it. in your case now, isn't it? Being well, the Grand Master. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah there are but rules, and there are rules, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but a lot of my weekends, um, be because my work will take Monday to Friday. Uh, the weekends are the opportunities yeah. when I have to get around the countryside and visit. Weeknights? Would you be out how many times a week on weeknights? To uh, it depends on the yeah. weeks uh, because, again, I have work commitments mm. um, in the evenings. So it's a mixture of work, Freemasonry, and, yeah. and a bit of my own private life. It's, it's a 
Now, Mark, we're running out of time, but what I did want to uh, say was that um, you start launch this campaign, speak up for Freemasonry. Um, what would you say if uh, suddenly a young 23-year-old boy, just like you were all those years ago, uh, said, Mark, I'd like, I'm thinking about Freemasonry. What would you say to him? What, um, why should he join? It's interesting. There are many reasons to join Freemasonry, and, and this is also part of my Speak Up for Freemasonry yeah. campaign. Uh, when you sit down with uh, anyone, whether he's a 23-year-old, whether he's a 53-year-old, yeah. or whether it's a lady that you're talking to, you've got to sit down and uh, talk to them about aspects of Freemasonry that will appeal to them. Yeah. Now, you know, when I t think of ladies, ladies are really interested about our benevolent and our charitable activities, our community work, what we do at a local level. They're interested in the genealogy, mm -hmm. photos of, of granddad and those, those sorts yeah. of things. A young man, a young man would, uh, a 23 year old, he'll be facing um, work obligations, he'll be playing sport, He'll be looking to set up a family and have so many demands on his time. So I think what I'd say to a 23-year-old is, if you join Freemasonry, I want you to make a commitment of four hours a month for 12 months of the year. And if you give me a commitment of four hours a month... It's not much, is it? Not much. Yeah. But you see, guys nowadays think of time. Yeah. It's, uh, everything has changed. You know, when I joined, it wasn't uh, everything down to the last minute. But today, men today think of time. And if I can say, right, four hours a month to Freemasonry. And that will get you camaraderie. It will get you uh, the, the values that society is based on. Mm. It will get you an involvement with other men of similar values and similar mind. And importantly, it will involve you in the social activities of the lodges, which involves your partners, families, and so forth. Now, Mark, this is a baby boomer chat show. I'm sure you're a baby boomer. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> um, what about us baby boomers? Um, some of the, you know, the oldest baby boomer now is uh, 69, 70, and the youngest baby boomer is 56. Mm -hmm. Is there a place in Freemasonry for baby boomers to, um, even at this late stage, to join up? Uh, you welcome them as well? Look, um, officially, we welcome any man of calibre mm. to join Freemasonry. Personally, while I'm keen on getting young members in, I recognise that they have a lot of other demands on their yeah. time. But by the time one is reaching the 50s and, and on, you're looking for something more. You're looking for something more from life. You know, I think as a lawyer, I've earned money. I know I've bought a house. Yeah. I've then earned some more money. I've bought a car. I've earned some more money, I've bought a beach house. Yeah. And then you get to the stage of saying, look, well, I've got everything. Money's money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to put something back into the yeah. community. Yeah. And so through Freemasonry, that's where I can put something back yeah. and make a difference in the community. And I can do it with other like-minded brethren and enjoy their company and their camaraderie and, and have some real enjoyment in my advancing years. And we haven't even touched on the huge amount of charity work done by Freemasonry throughout New Zealand. We haven't even touched on it, have we? I've got another half hour. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's enormous, it's isn't huge. it? It's you know, huge. Scholarships for young people. It's, it's, um, give us five off the top of your head that, um, that you're pr most proud of. Well, let, let me talk about the um, children's playground we built uh, 18 months ago at Homai College for the Blind. Mm -hmm. Children that are sight impaired. And we contributed over half a million dollars to a children's playground, to an interactive uh, playground for the sight-impaired children at Homai College. That's a lot of money, isn't it? The, the, mm. the playground, it's got swings and yeah. slides, as you'd expect. But again, you've got to put on your... Think about the sight-impaired. These kids have to get confidence walking outside with a, a, a cane. And so the, the playground is built part of it's with an asphalt mm. surface so they get used to walking on asphalt and then it changes to a wooden surface and the wood might be going crossways mm. and then it changes to a tile surface and as they walk they get to know the different textures now to you or I we yeah. might not see that that was yeah. important but to the sight impaired 
that's crucial. It gets them the confidence mm. to get outside. And they then know whereabouts they are in the playground. They understand uh, uh, where the swings might be, uh, what the textures to get them out to mm. wherever they might be going. There's a herb garden there. Yeah. And so the smells of all the different herbs. Oh, and it, it is great really, idea. It was, it, it's, yeah. the, the, the playground, when it was uh, opened, was at the forefront of the world. It was designed professionally. Mm. The Home Eye College people put a heck of a lot of time and effort into making sure that it was going to be state of the art. But without your help, they, it would have been more difficult to do, wouldn't it? Well, you yeah. know, we're delighted that they've called the park the Freemasons Park. Yeah. And that's, I think, a reflection of their, their appreciation for that. Well, we are out of time. Uh, I said name five, but um, that's yeah. just one, isn't that's it? One. You've got another three or four, I'm sure, that, mm. uh, that you're doing all the time. So, Mark, well, to finish, we'll uh, go back to that wonderful day last November. You've only been at it now six months, but uh, you wouldn't change places with anybody. You, uh, you're loving it. Thoroughly enjoying it. It's, it's uh, busy. It's yeah. keeping me occupied, but I enjoy being busy and I enjoy making a difference. The Grand Master of New Zealand. Wonderful title, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't get higher than that, does it? No. <laughs> Next step, Prime Minister. Ah. <laughs> Mark, thanks very much. Thank you. We'll see you again. Thanks.